We're going to do these six problems, in each case showing that the given set with the indicated operations is not a vector space. In order to do that, we'll have to show that the given set and the indicated operations do not satisfy at least one of the ten vector space axioms, which are seen here. I'll leave a link in the description to my lesson introducing vector spaces if you need to review that. Let's get into it with problem one. In this situation, the set is r squared, and the vector addition is defined as usual. However, scalar multiplication is defined like this. k times the vector u is equal to k times the first component, but the second component is forced to be zero. This is a weird definition of scalar multiplication, so when we try to think of what vector space axiom this might violate, we of course will look to the scalar multiplication axioms. In particular, axiom 10 requires that multiplying any vector by the scalar 1 doesn't change the vector. By the definition of scalar multiplication here, that is clearly not the case. If we take 1 and multiply it by the vector 2, 3, for example, for this axiom to be satisfied, this must produce the vector 2, 3. It must be unchanged. However, based on this definition of scalar multiplication, we get the vector 2, 0. And so axiom 10 has been violated. This is not a vector space. Here in problem 2, we have a subset of R squared. This set contains all ordered pairs x, y, where x has to be non-negative. The operations are standard, so the standard vector addition and standard scalar multiplication. Again, though, the scalars are going to cause a problem here. Axiom 6 says that any scalar multiplied by any vector must also be in the set. However, that's not going to be satisfied in this space. For example, if we take the scalar negative 1 and multiply it by the vector 2, 2, Certainly, this vector is in our set because it's an ordered pair from r squared where the x component is non-negative. But if we multiply it by the scalar negative 1, then this produces the vector negative 2, negative 2, which is not in the set because the x component here is negative. So it's not closed with respect to scalar multiplication, and so it's not a vector space. We could also point out that there are not inverses in this set, which is axiom 5. If I took the vector 1, 1, for example, there's no inverse of 1, 1 in this set because the vector negative 1, negative 1 is not in the set. Again, it is not a vector space. We showed how it violates axiom 6, though of course there are other axioms you could show that it violates. Let's move on to problem 3. In problem 3, our set is the set of all second degree polynomials, with the standard operations of polynomial addition and scalar multiplication would just be multiplying the polynomial by a real number. In this case, we do have inverses. For example, I could take x squared and negative x squared. But this is actually a problem, because if I combine these two elements of our set, we're going to get 0. And 0 is not a second-degree polynomial, so 0 is not in the set. And so we have not satisfied closure. It's not the case that the sum of any two vectors is in the set here. Hence, it's not actually a vector space. We see that it violates axiom one. Problem four is the set of integers with the standard operations of addition and multiplying an integer by a real number would be scalar multiplication. It's quick to see that we do not have closure under scalar multiplication in this set because if we take the element 4, for example, and multiply it by the scalar 1 third, we get 4 thirds, which is not an element of the integers. And so this set with the given operations is not closed with respect to scalar multiplication. We have violated axiom 6. In problem 5, our set is the set of all invertible 2 by 2 matrices with standard matrix addition and scalar multiplication. In this case, we don't have closure, for example, because if we take the identity matrix, which is certainly invertible, it is in fact its own inverse, we could add the identity to its negative, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. This is another invertible matrix. 
their sum is the zero matrix, which is certainly not invertible. So this set is not closed. We've taken two elements from the set and added them together to produce something that is not in the set. So we have violated axiom one of closure. Of course, we do not have closure with respect to scalar multiplication either. If we took the identity and multiplied it by zero, we would also get the zero matrix. Again, not invertible. Let's move on to problem six. In problem six, our set is the set of all non-invertible two by two matrices. Again, with standard matrix addition and scalar multiplication. You may be able to quickly come up with two non-invertible matrices that have a sum that is invertible. And so again, we would violate closure. For example, this matrix, one, zero, 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 is not invertible. And we could add it to this other matrix that's not invertible, the matrix 0, 0, 0, 1. Neither of these matrices are invertible, so they're both in our set. But if we add them together, we get the identity matrix, which is certainly invertible. And so again, we violated axiom 1 of closure. Interestingly, this example does not violate closure of scalar multiplication. If you have a non-invertible matrix, you can't multiply it by scalar to make it invertible. But regardless, it's not a vector space because, for example, it does not satisfy axiom one. So those are a few examples of how you can show that a given set with an indicated operation is not a vector space. We just have to find an axiom that it does not satisfy. And often there are multiple choices. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions and be sure to check out my linear algebra course and linear algebra exercises playlists in the description for more. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I'm the mathematical menace, the machinations of mankind. Two calculators at the same time, hand signs and abacus, finger count and calculus. I'm the V to the T, my parameter, the rapidest. Happens like this, my lectures, the most prominent, dominant. Call me the Morgan, I get the compliments. The union in together like any time that we intersect, cause my opponents know they need.